The mid 70s was considered the golden years of motocross for the brand Can-Am with wins back to back, sending a rider with the gold medal home. But after all the success, why would Can-Am stop making dirt bikes? In today's video, we will get into that. Let's date back. The late 60s and 70s, motocross has been gaining popularity across the globe with European bikes dominating this scene, such as Maiko and Asa. Japanese manufacturers such as Honda, Suzuki, and Yamaha has joined this thriving market, which had made this sector more competitive. Bombardier recreational product known as BRP, as of today, has entered the market under Can-Am brand of that year after two years of testing and adjusting with the help of jeff smith a world champion production has started in 73 in 73 canada made its first mark at the international six days trial in 73 making a historic win can now make another big splash at the ama 250 nationals and also from 75 to 76 won the AMA Supercross Championship. After all the outdoor success, it will come to an end with the Can-Am motocrossing scene, which will leave many question marks of two why. Honestly, I have been really impressed with Can-Am lineup. I can only imagine if they had continued today with their motocrossing, like where could it have been? Like, Tell me your thoughts in comments down below where you think can would have been if they had stayed the course. So guys, to answer this question, can was too slow in changing and keeping pace with the Japanese. I mean, let's guess. The Japanese, they were really dialed in with the technology and the victories. And can fell to fill the void. Honestly, they had an advantage too with their 250cc motocross bikes that was capable of winning. And they also had great riders, pioneers on these bikes, such as Gary Jones and Jimmy Ellis and many other people. But unfortunately, it just came to an end. I mean, there have been speculation all the way to the 2004 of another bike coming, but it just never did happen. I mean, yeah, we had an electric bike recently, but come on now, think about it. This was rich history that just lasted all the way up to this time and many more. Um, it's just sad to see that they had the pull to plug, but I guess good things come to an end and different management just seem to have a different eye for a different spectrum. You know, they turned their eye towards the ATV world, which had huge amount of success. I mean, look at the ATV side by sides. People want these machines and they have been, you know, been going up, you know, and Honda and they bikes. I mean, look at theirs. I mean, look at the history. They continue and they are on top of their game. I can only imagine if Can Am just had stuck to the fight just to compete. Um, I felt like they would have been, you know, on top at least. And honestly, guys, I forgot to mention no non Japanese brand could say they had won the AMA motocross and supercross against the Japanese, but Can Am, which that holds something. So guys, y'all let me know y'all opinion uh, down in the comment section. Um, should Can-Am stay where they stayed or should they have continued on to this day? If they had continued, would we have the ATVs, the side-by-sides and all that good little stuff on today? And if we did, would it be where it is today or would it be an underdog? I mean, y'all let me know y'all opinion. And I feel like Canem should have continued, honestly, in my opinion. Um, but I guess good things always come to an end. 
So, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this. I hope y'all have a great day. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Make sure to like the video if you haven't. And share the video if you haven't. I really appreciate y'all. Let's continue.